I'd like to talk just a short, small, little clip video about being born again. Um, being born again is a byproduct of going to heaven. You know, you got, you must be born again. Jesus said that to the Pharisee uh, that was inquiring about learning more about heaven. Jesus pushed on, you know, pulled, like you know what? The first time you were born from your mother's womb, he said, but that was from flesh. You were born out of flesh. Now you need to be born out of spirit. So let me put it to you like this. It's a conscious decision from your mind. This is how you get born again. This is the recipe. It's a conscious decision from your mind that you do on purpose. So you're not born again when you get baptized from uh, as a baby, you know, as so many do uh, in the Catholic faith because a baby doesn't know what they're doing. A baby didn't make that decision for themselves. It's cute. But it's not um, an experience. You know, being born again, it's an experience from God. So first thing I want to say. So, so being baptized, you know, we want to follow Jesus' uh, pattern of what he did here on earth. You know, he, he showed us uh, an example. So you make a conscious decision for those that care to want to uh, be born again. This is for them. Um, you make a conscious decision with your mind and your heart, okay? You confess that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he, was, he rose on the third day. That's what the Bible says. For you to believe that in your heart and then confess that with your lips. And if you do that and you mean it, then that is a big step forward to, to being born again. Because right there, you're, you're saved because you have faith in the sacrifice that Jesus Christ laid down for you. And the sacrifice had to do with taking your sins on the cross for those that don't understand. So you sinned, I sinned, everybody sinned. Jesus made provision for the sin. He said, okay, I'm righteous, you're not, I'm gonna trade places with you. He is that good, that's why he's a savior, right? And so then he rose from the dead. Very important to throw that in there. He rose from the dead. He didn't stay in the, in the grave. Every other religion that they worship Buddha or this or that, they're all dead. They lived once upon a time, but then they died and they, they're still dead. You could visit them in their grave. They have a tombstone with their name on it. But Jesus Christ doesn't have... A, a, a tombstone that said that he remained dead. He he he. They they put him behind a rock that rolled, and that 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 rock that rolled was pushed back. And when they looked for Jesus, he was gone. He wasn't there anymore. Jesus had showed himself at that point to many witnesses and performed many more miracles before he ever ascended back to being with the Father in heaven. This is the Bible. And so the Bible says, if you believe that, the same way that you believe that dinosaurs once existed because history tells you so, uh, if you believe that and confess that, then you will receive eternal life by grace. Just because God already did everything for you, all, now all you have to do is chime in, connect yourself to that. And so if you believe in your heart, you confess with your lips, you shall be saved. You confirm your salvation with an act of of like okay now I want to die to the old man I want a new life okay this is how I got voices out of my head this is how I I've been baptized over 11 times and I and I understand that theologically speaking you don't have to get baptized that many times the reason why I got baptized that many times is because I was I was so filthy dirty and sin I went in so far deep in the darkness, right? Yeah, I was friends with the devil, man. You know what I mean? How, how, how much deeper can you go? So, so I went all the way to that area. And then when I wanted to return back to Jesus, I mean, or when I wanted a, a new life and I found Jesus, Jesus found me. You know, do you think it was patty cake? Do you think it was easy? The devil didn't want that. He fought me every step of the way. He threw everything in the kitchen sink at me. By the grace of God, he got me through it all. I cooperated with the Lord, you know? It was it was God's grace plus my 
my diligence of, of following him that God brought me through hell, out of hell. And then he started to display his marvelous deeds in my life where I was able to see him put me back together and heal me of many wounds, of traumas, and etc. And then patch up relationships that I had broken and then he just formed a life for me with a family, a wife, and children, and a house, and a job, and the whole thing. And then he's like, all right, you're good, you're good now. Like, I, I, I've resurrected you, I've brought you back to a place where you, you should have been, right? Or, or if you never lived a bad life, in the, you would have all these things right now. You would uh, have a house and a wife and children, etc. But a lot of people don't have peace, right? And they're running on empty in life. And they're worried and anxious and fearful. God takes care of all that stuff. And people don't relate God to these things. They just think that God is religion. He's not. And he took my fear. He, I, had, I, had, I had fear, you know. He took that thing from me, man. You know. And um, he gave me, he gave me a new, new desires. Uh, my desires now is to serve him and to, to please him. And... Although that might not tickle the ears like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, you know, I get great satisfaction out of serving God. You know, I get the same satisfaction out of serving God that somebody gets out of going to the beach uh, or whatever. So anyways, he puts it in your heart. You have to understand that part. That he, the creator, knows how to do these things. So, so being born again back to being baptized you know I was baptized over 11 times each and every time that I went and I got dunked and now I didn't get baptized 11 times back to back to back to back on different days different months whenever I felt like I needed to be cleansed I would get baptized and what would happen for me was I, I felt more liberated and more free and then also what happened for me was I felt more affirmed in Jesus Christ I you see I was wavering back then I I was being hit so hard by the devil the devil wanted me to question my identity in God he's like now nah, you belong to me etc and, and and because I didn't have a strong foundation back then I was being rocked by these storms and I didn't I didn't have anything to really grab on to so I grabbed on to baptism and then every time I felt dunked I was just like yes I reaffirm myself that I do belong to Jesus Christ and and I wasn't I wasn't being uh, easily at that point it was like a strengthening that would come to me to where I was just like taking out the lies you know the weeds that the devil was trying to sow into me right later on as let me give you something that happens as you get hit you know God allows it you're gonna go through spiritual warfare and it's called testing you know the devil's gonna lied to you a lot man i remember when the devil you know he came after me man so hardcore certain things i can't even say because it's so grotesque it's so 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 putrid okay so evil that people won't even believe me okay if i told them the devil you know let i'm gonna say a few things he doesn't play fair he lies like like nobody's business uh, and he he steals a lot. Man, has he stolen from me? Okay, he doesn't just st steal physical property, but intellectual property. You'll forget your own testimony just so that just so that. And when I say your your testimony, I don't mean like your whole testimony. I just mean details of your your testimony that could help other people. Like those things will just disappear from your mind. I remember I was so eager to share my testimony with so many people because in my heart, I was just like, oh, this is going to help a lot of people. And things would just disappear from my mind. I was like, hey, man, that's why you got to write stuff down, man. The devil, the devil, the devil, um, I was doing my tape earlier. The devil, the devil, uh, man, is he a thief? Boy, is he a thief? So, so he tries to sow things into your heart and in your conscience, he tries to play with your mind even through dreams I remember in the very beginning of my walk with God in the very beginning I recall God had just washed me clean okay at this particular point in time I had transitioned from being a sinner super filthy dirty 
to now being super clean and dressed in white and just being like, and when I say dressed in white, I mean in the spirit. I mean like I'm blemish free, I'm blameless. I'm living the life that God ordained for me to have simply because all I'm doing is God. I'm doing God in the morning, evening, and night. Meaning, meaning, when I wake up, I'm giving God thanks, worshiping Him, praising Him, praying to Him, bowing to Him, you know, and then seeking out His will for my life. That's what I mean when I say, you know, I'm dressed in white and this and that. Because when you're doing that, all you're connected is to God. But how do you get dirty? How do you get blemished? Well, when you start messing around in places where, that, that are dirty, you know, if I would have went to a bar, I would have went to a place uh, that could have triggered me to fall or fail or, or be tempted by old peers and stuff like that. You know, little by little, that, that white uh, clothes is not so white no more, right? Because you're in dirty places. So I went every, every day to church for like two years, man. No lie. And it was just, it was just because I needed to train myself to this new life. You see, I was coming from hell, bro. And quite literal help, okay, not figuratively. And so when I say that, you don't know the trauma, the PTSD that I was coming from. And then also, you don't know how desperate I was to get out of hell. So when I say that, that it makes prison on earth, like these little prison cells that we hear about uh, people going to prison, I, I kid you not, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just being real with you. It makes it look like a daycare. When I was in, uh, like, in, in, in the dungeon in hell, I recall being, like, like watching prison shows on, on TV. And I'm like, oh, you guys have light? You have light? So you got water? Oh, you, you're not out there working, laboring, getting whooped all day? I said, this is, this is a hotel, a five-star hotel at that. I said, you don't know. You don't know. And I'm just saying... My experience. I was there for a couple of years in hell, and what I saw, I don't wish upon anybody, because what I saw made a grown man close his eyes. I couldn't see the evil. I swear, I my 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 eyes hurt from the all the skulls and dead bodies everywhere uh, in hell. Like you would see, you the, the, it was a mountain of. I don't know how I got here, man. I I swear. I I started off with being born again and, and I'm over here but 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 there was a mountain there's this uh th like as I'm leaving as God is ushering me out of hell and I'm taking the trip out I'm walking and I see I see things that I just I had to close my eyes to you know have you ever seen a little kid when they're watching TV and they see something like on TV that they hurt you know, they did look away and they that was me in hell, bro, because although I was a sinner, man, and I had done a lot of dirt, there was levels of sin there that just made me say, whoa. It was beyond. It was beyond anything that, that you can ever imagine. So, like, God got me out of there, and then, like, when he got me out of there, all of this is like going on internally, right? Physically, I'm in my room. Physically, I could be watching TV or whatever. But internally, man, I'm watching God lead me out of hell. And I recall that when he did that, and he brought me all the way out, and, and I'm following him at this point, I'm praising him. And I'm saying, and I'm saying, oh, thank you, God. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. I'm just praising him, praising him, praising him. And I recall that at that particular point in time, I'm out to help people. I'm out to bless people. So I'm going to tell you some things. Um, at that, I, as I'm praising God more and more, like 10 minutes later, of praising God because, hey, I'm, you know, God gives me my first test. I'm walking out of hell, and God gives me my first test. And the test was this. I'm praising God. I'm saying, thank you so much. I'm going to follow you anywhere you go. Uh, you're awesome, man. You know, you're the best, etc. And then I feel like God is going into an area where it's unsafe. Right? Because, mind you, we're walking out of hell. And where, where we're walking, 
is like a place where there's nothing there's not a lot of action going on it's just a trail and so it's dark but God is light so God is illuminating the way and so I feel content I feel like okay 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 there's nothing grabbing me there's nothing you know hurting me because hey man sheesh you don't know so I'm following God I'm praising him etc and then God after 10 minutes of it he decides I'm gonna get off this trail I'm gonna go I'm gonna go into a direction where it feels it, it seems like I'm going back into hell or something like that and I look at God and I say my praise stopped he want to know the test was are you gonna follow me are you gonna follow me you say you love me you say you, you say you're so thankful and this and that I remember on that test in the in, in the beginning when I, I just stood there frozen in fear I didn't I didn't move I was just like God God, where'd you go? God, I was frozen in fear because I didn't want to go in that direction. That's just, that's just be real. That's, that's, that's what happened. You know, uh, so I say that because God, God tests people, man. You know, he's a God of, he wants to see if your words match up with reality, man. You know what I'm saying? So you'll get tested. But, um, seen so many tests in my life it's not even funny so the test that I'm in right now as an example is I'm I'm and I'm not saying that this is gonna happen to you I'm just saying that this is where I'm at right it's been about a year and a half closer to two years if I'm not mistaken of not seeing a breakthrough right now mind you when in the beginning when you're when you're walking with God when you're when you're uh, in the beginning, when you're a baby Christian, everything that you ask for is in instantaneously given to you. It could be a miracle. It could be something really hard, but God gives it to you. And it's like you start to like, whoa, God is really good. You start to boast about God. You start to, uh, you know, God. That's your God. You know, what I mean? like, my God can do anything, man. I just pray and he gives it to me, man. You're, you're, you're boasting on God, man. You're, you're proud of God. You love God, man. You know? And uh, and that lasts but a little while. As soon as you, you start to sink in your teeth and taste and see that God is good, God's like, all right, I'm changing it up. We're going to do something different now. And what we're going to do now is to grow you, mature you, so that you can... You know, uh, stand on your own two feet. You know, you know, it's not that you're not gonna rely on me, but it's more so like he's into fruit, he's into character, right? He's not against labor, okay? And so, I uh, I started to pray for things at that time, and it, it was coming, but it was coming at a later date, whereas before it was in instantaneous, okay? Kept praising, kept being, uh, kept being very faithful and whatnot, and I started seeing increase in my life in every way possible. I'm talking about financial, um, every way that you can imagine. I started to see increase, prosperity. Okay, started to get used to it. I started to get familiar with it. I loved it, but I'm saying like, I was just like. And so it was because I was in the will of God. It was because I was doing my end, my duty, my responsibility to serve Him. Period. I was, I was active in the church. I was active outside of the church, evangelizing. I was always serving God, worshiping God. Even on my breaks, while I would be working, I would go and worship God on my break, just so you have an idea. And so. And so, in doing so, man, I, I was going up like a rocket, you know. Uh, you know, the devil, absolutely, still busy, still coming after me, still trying to, 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 you know, all the more now, actually. And then, you know, I experienced a lot of warfare, but God was using the warfare to build me strong, right? All these demons, man, they would come at me by the hundreds, okay? And they were all little small demons, right? But they would come at me by, by the hundreds. And then they would all try to grab onto me and tear me down, bring me down, you know. One would be talking over here, one would be on my back trying to pull me. And, and it was just like, it was just like a football team, man, coming at you all at once, man. And I just felt like, God, man, you know, this is not. Now, 
I went I went through a lot of warfare, man. And it was it was it was it was bad. Okay. Now what what I didn't know then that I know now is that God takes all that pain, suffering and all that and builds you back stronger. So they're kinda like tearing you down, kinda bringing you down kind of thing, you know. But God's gonna make you stronger. So I went through a lot of depression, I went through a lot of um doubting and questioning and this and that but i stay faithful at the same time and through that that testing and through all those seasons what i found is is that when my season was up the demons would go away god would come and reform me and re-strengthen me and rebuild me stronger and as a result when i would be tested again i could withstand more and i also saw god's faithfulness that god will come in and not allow you to be crushed or not allow you to be taken by these things, right? Like, you can be tested, you can be bruised up a little bit, but you won't be. It was nothing like hell, as an example, right? Hell was just all day, every day, torment, torture. This is more so like practice, right? Like, practice, like, how to fight back. Practice how to overcome. Practice how not to let them get to you. Practice self-control. Practice patience. Practice worshiping me in the midst of chaos and destruction going on around you. Practice all this stuff. So, so that's uh, this this is the video, guys. I gotta go right now. I just got to work right now. But, but basically, um, it was practice, and and I got good. I got good after a while, you know. Um, I'm not gonna be prideful and say, "Oh man, I made it and this and that." Like you know, but it's just it's it's uh, levels and and it's like growing, man. You go you go from glory to glory, faith to faith, and and um, and God is there every step of the way to to confirm you and reaffirm you and plant you and this and that. The whole point that I'm trying to make is is that it all starts with being born again, and then you get baptized, you affirm yourself in Him. And then you're no longer part of this uh, earth system. We're part of heaven system. And then you get the heavens, uh, heavens uh, resources. And then it's a different taste, a different quality of life, a, a different sight, a different experience on earth. So, God bless you.